Good day. I have created these three short lectures to help you understand the principles of good presentation. The purpose of this series of lectures is to ensure that when you are asked to present during your course, you will be prepared and that your presentations will be worthwhile and of a good quality. The objectives of this short lecture series is to allow you to employ the basic principles of good presenting and also to help you prepare good audiovisual material, particularly in relation to slideshows. There are three lectures in this mini-series. The first will concentrate on the environment, the second, the set dialogue and closure, and the third will look particularly at audiovisual aids. As with any undertaking, the most important aspect of good presentation is good preparation. It is essential to understand that there are four parts to every presentation, the environment, set, dialogue and closure. In this short lecture, we're going to focus on the environment. So what is the environment? I'd like you to just take a few seconds to think about what the environment means to you when we're talking about presenting, lecturing or giving a talk. Well, the environment is the space in which we teach or lecture and within this there are several things we need to think about. The comfort of our audience is essential and important. If the audience is not comfortable, they will not be listening to you and they will not be engaging their brains. Remember a room can be too hot or too cold. The lighting may be inadequate, too bright or too dark. It's important, especially with larger groups, that everybody feels that they are part of the learning experience and that they can all see what is going on and take part in what is going on. Similarly, Non-verbal body language can be very important and if our environment is not set up correctly we may find that simply by the arrangement of the chairs or participants we may be excluding some of the participants. For example, they may be to one side or behind our backs or outside of our line of sight. Here are some very typical seating arrangements that you might find. Have a look at this and tell me if it reminds you of anything and how that makes you feel. Well, as many of you might have thought, this is very much a back-to-school sort of setup. It is very formal. The speaker tends to be in complete control. However, bear in mind this type of arrangement does tend to inhibit audience participation. There are uses for it, for example, if you're at a conference um, or a scientific meeting where the speaker in fact has to be in control, then this setup works well. Notice that staggering the chairs on the audience helps everybody get a view of what's going on in front. What about this seating arrangement? Can you think of any situations or learning environments in which this kind of arrangement was used? So the circle is often used when we want open, free discussion among participants because it gives the impression that all participants are equal. In this setting, a good facilitator can give up control to the group while subtly maintaining 
some degree of order and avoiding chaos. There are certain topics that lend themselves to this arrangement, particularly open-ended topics or topics in which we expect opposing views but for which there is no specific right answer. So for example, it might be useful in workshops, it might be useful when discussing things like bereavement um, or um, people's thoughts on religion or end of life. Here's another seating arrangement. I want you to think back on the last two and tell me what this arrangement has in common with them and in which ways it might be different. This is called a horseshoe. It captures some of the inclusivity of the circle, but the lecturer still maintains their position somewhat outside the group and in control. This is a good way of having a small closed discussion in which the speaker needs to maintain control. For example, if you're discussing blood gases or ECGs and you want participation from the audience but you the speaker needs to be in good control and move the thing forward or let make sure it goes the direction you want it to go. In this day and age it's really important that we talk about the online environment and also some of the challenges this may pose. Remember that for the DM part 1 classes, at least for the next semester, our classes are going to be online and I suspect for some time in the future. So what are some of the challenges we might face? Well, technology certainly is a big challenge. We may have a poor grasp of technology. Often my experience is that we have bandwidth issues. So we have poor audiovisual connections or sometimes the scope of the technology is then limited. If you want to use a file that is very um, large or you know show videos, sometimes that doesn't work so well if the bandwidth is small. Um, there may be visual limitations, both physical and technological, um, you know, depending on the size of the screen, but even within the room that you are speaking, if the room is not well lit or if your camera is not so good, there may be problems. Similarly, there may be audio limitations for the same reasons. And as much as we talked about bandwidth, there are also issues about connectivity. And I think just remember, if you're going to use online environment, think about an alternative if your con connectivity fails. Actually, a lot of times what we do is if, the, if you know, we might use something like Zoom or WebEx. And if that fails, but we need to continue, we can um, still maintain some connection using your phone and, you know, apps such as WhatsApp. What about physical limitations? But remember that um, even though the class is online, each individual is in a physical space and you need to make sure that that space is appropriate as a learning environment and what the rest of the group is seeing through their computer screen is also appropriate. So is the space well lit? Is it not too big or not too small? beware of physical distractions. We, we, we get lost in our own computer. So just because we're in a computer, if we are in the middle of a busy emergency department, other people looking through their screens are going to be distracted by the noise and various activities that might go on behind your back. So it's important to try to maintain a certain amount of privacy quiet and control in your environment because that is what is going to be projected through your camera. And also remember that there are issues with behavior when it comes to um, the online environment. People's attention span is a lot shorter than you think. They may have competing demands, you know, they may be at work trying to listen to you and do other things. Um, especially when things go on, each individual might be in their own little physical space and therefore it's very easy to lose interest in what's going on. And sometimes people display antisocial behavior online. That might be intentional. For example, people feel much freer to criticize when they are not physically close to you or when they think that you are, they don't have that personal connection. 
it might be unintentional you know people going to the toilet switching off their video um, flushing the toilet and the audio is still on and everybody can hear what they're doing how do we tackle these problems well with the technology is as simple as knowing your technology and if it's new technology practice beforehand just because you use zoom doesn't mean that using webex is going to be exactly the same or google meet you need to practice with the technology to make sure you know what you're doing um, make sure the technology is working before you start so practice with the software as well as the hardware and make sure everything is working before you start and if you are lucky to have IT support make sure you know who they are how to contact them and make sure they know when you're having a meeting so they can help if they need to try to ensure a good connection and if you're really not getting a good connection or you know that where you are doesn't have a good connection please move somewhere else and get a better connection if it is that you have to use the space and the connection is persistently bad actually it is a good idea talking to IT um, sometimes they don't know about the problem and sometimes when they do they can correct it similarly with the physical space check the space beforehand with the technology working make sure somebody else on another screen you can see what what is behind you and what they will see when you are online try to minimize physical distractions get a private space with low noise and a low risk of distraction and ensure privacy um, both in terms of face-to-face -face privacy you don't want people walking in on you if you're talking about something confidential and also online security do not ever continue a meeting if there is somebody in that meeting whose name you don't recognize you must lay down some ground rules for the etiquette in the meeting in general it is good to encourage participation but try to avoid public embarrassment of individuals and avoid the things that are so easy in an online space so avoid trolling and avoid antisocial behavior and also try to maintain strict behavioral controls so you tell people what they're supposed to do and then you make sure that they do it so that's a very quick talk about the environment when it comes to a teaching space if you have any questions you can um, what put them on the whatsapp group or talk to me in class on a Wednesday in summary this is the first part of a three-part lecture series on presenting in which we covered the environment the next section will talk about the set dialogue and closure thank you